What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Last Days of Warcast. We are the Last Days of War. I'm Pete the Beat. I'm Danny. I'm Rob. That's Danny. <laughs> What's up, guys? How you doing? The... <laughs> Hope you're doing okay. We're doing great. What's first on the agenda, boys? Night Quill Shots. Shots. Danny. Once again, Mark and Dustin couldn't be with us again this week. Uh, we wish them well. Uh, but we got a lot of a lot of stuff to talk about this week, gentlemen. A lot yep, of stuff yep. to talk about. Some good uh, stuff that happened this week. Oh, this week and then coming up and, and a lot coming up. Uh, I want to just announce uh, real quick in uh, a month from the taping of this episode, not when this episode drops. So it's less than a month now at this point. Uh, we will be dropping and debuting uh, two songs. Uh, a new one, which we think you guys are all going to enjoy, and a uh, remix of sorts of another song we've done. And hopefully, uh, uh, we believe this one to be a fan favorite as well. So we try to put a different spin on it, and we're going to release something different. And uh, hopefully, you guys like it too. Um, but we'll we'll get further into that as the weeks get closer. And, Mark comes back and he'll promote the shit out of it. So we're, we're good there. Um, but we're going to have artwork for it. So new shirts, new merch is coming for it. Getting your summer gear ready. We got you. We got, we got new stuff coming in the pipeline. Uh, speaking of new, did you guys see that Slipknot announced their new drummer? Yes. Mm, yes, I did. And I want to call it and say that I was right. When I mentioned that weeks ago, that it would be pretty hilarious with the whole circle, the, all the different guys switching band members. But um, I'm I'm glad he's in the band. Watching the footage so far, I don't know how I feel with the comments of he's a better fit than Jay because I think they're just two different animals. Okay. But I think performance wise, so far from what I've seen, it, there's a little bit more passion behind it. But he's just a heavy hitter. So it they're gonna be exciting to watch and see. Danny, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think I think Josh, you're right. I mean, you you did call it. Uh I mean, and I I the whole time I was like, Yeah, that's probably ex that's exactly what's going on and here it is, you know. Um yeah, I think uh I think he's gonna put his own taste on it, you know, and I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I mean, we've had we, I feel like we've had a, some guys, like you said, he's a heavy hitter and I feel like we've we've had a couple drummers that maybe speed might have been more of their thing than maybe such a heavy hitter. So I feel like we might be getting some a little bit different kind of taste on it, which might be cool. So I'm I'm excited, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just the rotation alone, like I I don't know. I think it's kind of cool when they when bands kind of switch up members with members of other bands that have uh similar or like feels you know what i'm saying uh yeah whether it be to you know just switching things up or you know uh god forbid member passes or whatever it be but sometimes these these uh member changes end up making better formations you know yeah it's uh, happened i mean there's been tons of bands i mean i mean just growing up i mean I, we watched it with uh uh Blink 182, you know, they went through a couple of drummers. They got a drummer, kind of really changed them, and there they go. You know, we've seen, we've seen it happen with Corn. I mean, they've gone, you know, uh, with a totally different drummer, and it's a, it's kind of a different vibe, you know, than what it used to be. You know, and I think th sometimes these work out to be good, and sometimes not so good. You know. Well, let yeah. me let me ask you this: Do you think <clears throat> Slipknot with Jay? was more mainstream than when they had Joey. That's hard to say because isn't their biggest song, like, kind of one of their biggest hits on, isn't it Psychosocial? Yeah, so it's it's more of a, do you think it was more like paying tribute to Joey's style? Do you think it was more, you know, like, how do you, how do you, if if someone brings in a staple sound, like Eddie Van Halen or something like that, you know, where a signature sound and you're known for it. And then the fans grow to love that original format and then it splits or tears apart or breaks off or, you know, and someone has to switch out. 
do you bring your flavor? Do you try to emulate their flavor? What What are your guys' thoughts? I think it depends, honestly, on the band and the band members. Then you worry about the fans because at the end of the day, yes, the fans are important, but if the band is the one who you got to deal with and worry about your performance and if they're more worried about yeah we want to sound this way and you can't change anything we don't want you to improvise anything then you're basically looking for a hired musician you're not looking to have somebody join your band you're looking for what they call a studio musician who you want to take on tour with you he's not going to change anything so then you could care less what he's doing where with I think with Eloy, he has such a big presence as is, it allows him to come into the mix, add his own flair to it, which you already hear, because me being a drummer, I've watched their stuff. He does play a little bit faster, so they joke around and say he doesn't play to a click. Well, he is the damn click, so they're playing to his tempo. So if he wants to pick it up, he picks it up. He already added his own fills into stuff. So I think it's more of yeah. you got to go off of what the band wants to do, then worry about what the fans think. Oh, I get that. Uh, so, for example, if I were to leave the band, would you guys try to find um, a screamer that does what I do? Or would you try to find one that would more complement what Mark's doing or... With your writing style, I guess it's more of that route. Like if if we were to have to switch out, well, is it personal preference? Is it you know? I don't know. Uh, I know it's a group decision uh, ultimately. <laughs> it, don't be throwing no loopholes like, here right now. Don't be throwing no loopholes. What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, but, I know certain exceptions like Kiss, where one person is, uh, you know, makes all the decisions, or you know, like. Uh, you know, any of the bands where it gets narrowed down to Marilyn Manson makes the decisions for what the group Marilyn Manson does. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're saying. I guess I could think of it as I am no longer the newest member of the band, but from what I've gathered from being in the band with you guys, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to a group decision that it's going to be what would fit best for the band. But off the top of my head, bro, and I know Marco will agree with me, there's no way that we could replace your style with somebody else. Like, there is no <laughs> other you. <laughs> so it would basically right. be, if you left, I don't but, think but, that but, but, it would I continue mean, the same way. Uh, not to cut you off. Ultimately, I feel like that's the same with any of us. Like, the the attitude, the style, everything that we do it on our instruments, I feel like is irreplaceable. Um, that's why, and, that's why I think right. What you just said right there is why my answer would be, I probably wouldn't try to find somebody to just fill in and do it. How like one person was doing it. I would look for somebody to come in and do the job. And on, on certain things where it's needed to be done a certain way, I would be like, hey, you know, throw your own sauce on it, but it's kind of got to be this way. You know, there's some things that would have to be, and there's a lot of things that would be up there for them to kind of lock that in, you know? So it's more of a, a caliber that they got to be at in order to even participate. Yeah, I think so. Well, I mean, for example, you wouldn't have just any guitar player, like the guy from The Strokes couldn't come back and help bring back Pantera. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, right. It, no, I hear you, you. You can't replace Dimebag with the guy from The Strokes or even The White Stripes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sorry, Jack. Totally, uh, different, totally you, different avenue, right? Totally you, you different ballpark. So, so it has to be almost at a caliber level. So, so do we think Eloy is that caliber for Slipknot? I personally do think he is. Um, I, I think, think so, yeah. I think once... I hear some new music come out, then I'll have my 100% final decision because then you'll really see what they're doing because right now they're just playing all their hit songs. But they do also have the new member, the guy who replaced Craig. So we'll see what happens. I mean, I I wouldn't pay the prices to go see the show, 
But oh. that's the good thing nowadays about YouTube and all that. I just got to wait patiently and then I could check it out. But I'll wait and see what happens if once I start releasing new music to give my final say. But I, I think he's a good fit. I, it's not that he's better than Jay. I just think if they're going to go back to heavy, like Corey was saying, then yes, mm-hmm. Eloy's going to fit perfect. Oh, yeah. As yeah. long as Corey doesn't go back to Stone Sour, right? Or Corey, or, motherfucking or, Taylor, whatever that was. Uh, but I, I know he's he's dealing with a lot. He's got his wife speaking up for him now. So hopefully he gets all the rest and puts his best foot forward with Slipknot coming out with their whole new yeah. lineup. I, I wish him nothing but luck, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but you know who doesn't have any good luck right now? And uh, that? that would be Drake, because... I guess Kendrick Lamar dropped a new album and it's basically just calling Drake out as being uh, a predator, a groomer, yeah, and uh, absentee father. Of just, all kinds of using ghost writers, doing all kinds of stuff. He, he just, um, a couple of my coworkers at work were just like, God damn. Woo. You have well, no and it's the fact happened. too that Kendrick Lamar didn't just drop it as like an album. Like he dropped one song, and then like a week or two later, whatever, dropped another one, and then and then releases started hitting where it was like day, 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 and then it went like twenty minutes. To, you know what I'm saying? Like the the releases started getting closer, and it was like everybody's talking about how there's like somebody in Drake's camp like feeding him information because. There's shit that's happening that he's releasing on songs and it's so close together. It's like, how the fuck did he even know that? You know? Okay. So there's some there's some weird shit with it, but it's pretty interesting. And I guess uh Drake kind of just got it handed to him pretty much. Uh, but don't get me wrong, there's people coming to Drake's aid. Um yeah. but it's I I'm I'm not one for the hip hop game, like I'm I'm not even trying to come up as a rapper, so I have no business even talking about this game. Right. But just reporting, like, essentially, I think this would be, like, if, uh, you know, bands started calling out each other's bullshit. And I right. think in, in any genre or art platform or, or any profession, honestly, if you see some bullshit and you see a lot of shit going down, don't be afraid to speak up. Because that that hard truth will fucking be a hard bitch slap of truth for someone way down the line that really fucking needs it. You know, uh, mm-hmm. stay true to who you are. Don't be a fucking scumbag. Doesn't just. I don't yeah. know. That that's just me. Like I I hear a thirty one year old hanging out with a fourteen year old, and you're just like. Uh, only as a babysitter, and you're fucking, you're watching Rugrats, and then you're going to bed at eight. Like I ain't fucking putting up this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like you can watch your TV, but you're you're in bed by ten. Like I, there's nothing you need to be doing around someone more than half your age or less than yeah. half your age. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not a Drake fan at all, so I had no idea what you were talking about. I think the most I know about that dude is, isn't he, like, building himself a tomb or something in Toronto or some shit? I don't know. I have no clue. I don't know if it was a school for whatnot. I thought over in his area, he's, like, commissioned himself to have, like, a tomb or something built, and it's supposed to be all this decadent area of like all this underground stuff that's going to hold his jewels and all this shit and have all these different rooms for his buddies, his bodyguards and the afterlife. Who knows? I mean, it could be full of shit. I mean, Epstein had an man. island for that, right? Uh, which many believe that's where uh, P. Diddy and Tupac are right now. They're the same <laughs> ones that believe in the Alpha Draconians? <laughs> uh, no, no. No, because I don't believe that they're on this fucking island still. Uh, what, the Alpha Jacodians or uh, no, what's no, its name? No. The celebrities. Okay. Uh, I believe that most of these celebrities who we believe to be dead are dead. I'm with you. Sorry. I hate to break it to you. Like, Elvis is gone. I know you were going to say that. I mean, it's just like, okay, that's, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think we still got to deal with did you know courtney kill kurt or kurt kill kurt who knows um but in all reality just enjoy the music for what they gave us you know 
it's kind of like michael yeah. jackson like if you start diving deep into the whole like well this is when he started touching children okay well you can't listen to songs after this point but everything before <laughs> you can still oh, and and it's just like no like oh but what there there was a clear line that we uh all learned that is if you only watch the documentary uh was it leaving neverland yeah forgetting neverland or whatever neverland whatever finding neverland touching neverland whatever <laughs> uh, you you can still listen to his music as long as you didn't watch that documentary so uh i i really can't enjoy michael anymore uh sad to say but um hip-hop right yeah, yeah. We, I, I mean, it just, I, I don't see one causing beef in with anyone in our industry unless, I mean, they're just major pieces of shit and just feel like shooting random cans of Bud Light because of whoever's on it, you know? That, that's yeah, weird. well, I, that's don't, I don't really but, see, you know, I never, I never really looked at Drake as like a, like a gangbanger type persona that you know like it's just like yeah what do you what are you, what are you beefing about like yeah don't get it i mean weren't you on tv and then you went from tv to rap and it was just like all right yeah cool you're a rapper but don't yeah. be trying to beef with anyone just like this yeah is beef like is yeah. he trying to start really, beef so he weird. could be relevant I, I don't know but when you come from the industry of hollywood and hollywood's child actors are coming out and saying hey we got diddled hey, we're getting touched and and now he's saying like oh i'm unscathed and it's like oh he's one of them damn it like I, I don't know like at some point you have to just go uh okay wait wait just do do your fucking craft like if you love rap if you love hip-hop do the fucking music i i don't know like it's it's kind of hard for someone for someone to come up like let's say I don't know, like crazy town where the guys are all part of the industry. They're all in the label. And then, Hey, we're going to put this band together. and Bam. Here we go. Here's the band we're going to push. Like, get the fuck out of here. I, I don't think like, um, is Rob trying I mean, to beef right now? Is no, Rob but I'm just saying, <laughs> like, who are we going after like, right now? I think he's building it up. Who, who, who are we like, trying to beef with here? We, we crazy town. Here. Oh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> just, just start listing them off. I, I, I honestly believe, like, if you if you put your heart into your craft, into your art, and what you're doing, and somebody's shitting on it, d- dude, you still got you still got that hundred and ten backing it. You know you did fucking great. You know it, cool. But when your personal life starts interfering with your fucking professional life or your artistic life or whatever, it's just like, ah, oh, man, uh, yeah. I don't wish that upon anyone. Because I right. think a lot of crazy shit, but I don't actually say a lot of, well, I do say a lot of crazy shit, but a lot <laughs> of it's in private. And I know that the conversation's not being recorded and I know most of those people aren't cops, so we're good. <laughs> Shit. Hey, so Rob, I hear uh my son was talking to me about uh WrestleMania being in Vegas coming up. Bro, dude. What? Are you gonna are you gonna try to do this thing? I think we should all do this thing. Cause I think I'm gonna be because my son's already my son came to me and he's like, it's a year away. You Bro, can't say I'm, like you have gotta I'm do this. Tell you this. Go. We because they did they did the what all all in in chicago for aew right and then when they came out and they had their west coast show it was in las vegas called all out and it was like oh fuck like here we go or no it's called double or nothing sorry double or nothing so it was like oh shit here we go and when we went to vegas for the double or nothing let me just tell you like even as being a sub indie promotion coming up as major promotion for uh, professional wrestling there's wrestlers everywhere it's like wrestlemania so for wrestlemania to actually hit vegas oh everyone is gonna be there everyone is gonna be there i gotta be there you know what i'm saying and you know the dates of it nope 
No, I wasn't sure the dates. It's two dates. April 19th, Mark's birthday, 420. I think we definitely have to do this. <laughs> and I think I think Mark is really pissed that he's not part of this episode right now. You're welcome. Enjoy it, buddy. We're not buying you a ticket. Go fuck yourself. Oh. Right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> With that already, I thought your next line was going to be, hey, what if we get him the ticket as a birthday gift so there's no excuse? No, nope, he said you're buying your own ticket. Yeah, buying your own. You're bringing your own damn family. I know you. <laughs> He's gonna be like, "Oh, dude, everyone's gonna be there. We gotta. Really, I gotta get my room." But ultimately, that, well, that just means yeah. we're not sharing a room. It just means we all have to get our own room. And it's like, ah, oh, this is gonna be such an expensive thing for me now. Like Vegas, Vegas. When you're living in Cali, Vegas, you could just do Vegas. Be there, done. Uh, but now living out here in Texas, it's, uh, it, it's a journey. It's a it's save a up. Yeah. It's, uh, so I was going to ask, damn. are you going to fly or are you going to drive? I don't know, man. Uh, I'll be on that. I'd probably have to fly to be honest okay. with you. Yeah. Cause if you do WrestleMania, it's a two day event, Saturday, Sunday. It's uh, going to, it's then, of course, it's going to be at Elysian stadium, right? Oh, oh. yes, sir. That's what I was. That's what I was thinking, right? Yeah. It's got to be there, right? Yeah, it's at Allegiant. So, it's... are they doing any other events? Like, don't they do something in that town before and after? So, oh, would they yeah, be doing got, the, the yeah, other event? Would NXT. probably be where the uh, Golden Knights play, right? What is that? T-Mobile Arena? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm I, not sure if it's there or not, but I it mean, sounds like got a, a bunch time. of stuff. You you got the one Dead Man show. You got. Um, the NXT takeovers that they were doing for a minute. You got the Hall of Fame induction ceremony that's like the night before night one, I guess now. So there, there's a lot of stuff. And when WWE does WrestleMania, and I'm going to be honest, I haven't been there in 10 years since uh, it was in New Orleans and the street got broken. But when WrestleMania comes to town, they come to town. Like you see wrestlers walking down the street, you'll see wrestlers eating at establishments that you would normally eat, and and then with it being Vegas, oh my God, so much potential for so many wrestlers getting arrested. <laughs> That's what I, you I look just, at. You just you just know stories are going to be coming out left and right. Like oh, so and so got arrested. So and so got popped in a strip club. So and so fell asleep on the strip. Like. You know stuff's well, going to go down. I know they're going to land up in Clark County Jail. Yeah. So you're going to try to you're going to try to do it? Oh, I don't know, man. Um and he's, when, already, he's already talking to me about it. Up my sleeve. I got yeah. a couple couple things up my sleeve that we got to work out first, but uh we we got a bunch of stuff coming up and so I got to save my time, save my money, you know. Oh yeah. yeah. Plan this a little strategic, but I think we can make this one happen. Do you know nice when tickets do... go on sale? Oh, probably not till what? Yeah, October, okay. November. Uh, they'll probably start doing package deals probably September. Like, oh, hey, buy the flights and hotel and everything now because you're going to need it. And then everybody else just goes, hey, I'm calling up my timeshare. I got my timeshare. Here's what we're doing. This and then you hey, get to the final moment and you realize, hey, I want to do two days, nosebleeds, 500 bucks. Like, fuck. God like, damn. Yeah. And then you got flight. And then you got hotel. Because that's just the event. That doesn't include parking, which parking sucks in Las Vegas, by the way. If you've never been to Las Vegas, um, you can either park in the self parking lot, which is hot as fuck. It's like a fucking oven, or mm -hmm. you can park in like a fucking boonie ass parking lot, and your car is just gonna cook the whole fucking time. And then you walk all the way to the casino, and then you know, hey, we're there. The parking sucks. Rick and we're out there roasting, huh? Oh yeah. Speaking of roasts, oh. Good segue. See, of the night. Good segue. I like this. Did you see the uh, Tom Brady roast last night? Oh, it was so great. Um, for me, the wife and I, we got out of town. We went into uh, Fort Worth 
and we walked into this bar and we're just like hey we're gonna check out the bars out here because they're open till two out and further in town and on the big screen wall they had the uh the roast that tom brady projected up on the wall and the bartender was like hey please forgive me i'm gonna sit with you guys i'm gonna enjoy and watch this unless you guys mind or whatever i'm like no oh, chill so we all just sat there dead as fuck because you know being a sunday night out here in texas um <laughs> yeah it was it was pretty dead and we just sat there and watched and dying laughing at the watching the roast i thought everyone did a good job fucking cheers yeah it was funny there was uh there was that moment where brady walked up and told him what was it jeff ross uh about the massage thing was like hey don't don't say that shit again or something like that they don't mention it. and i was surprised that they uh one left it in the replay uh right two oh. even even showed it to begin with but it's just, oh, all right okay there's yeah. a certain there's a fine line okay we didn't talk about this before okay <laughs> good planning it's jeff ross though i mean that dude always pushes buttons so i'm not surprised by it oh and the th did you see how he responded he was literally just like yeah i got you yeah okay i'll like, probably yeah, just keep going I'll, like hey, really i'm not me, listening pump the brakes pump the brakes i got plenty of shit over here let's go you know he just went on to fucking hey your marriage or something else you know but let's think about this tom brady will smithing jeff ross i was waiting for him to come up and like when he got up and walked up to him i was like oh shit what's gonna happen here but do you think if that would have happened that jeff ross would have sued tom brady yeah oh i'm <laughs> I, i'm pretty sure jeff ross would be like paycheck you know just because yeah he's fucking laugh my way to retirement now i roast whoever the hell i want yeah he, yeah, he got roasted pretty good by uh what's what's her name um nikki glazer oh yeah she she oh, just the best she's done it to him before but, too she yeah, just roasted the shit the out of him best fucking roast. she was but, on point she was on fire dude she was just bam 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 shooting him down oh. the whole the whole twenty the whole money thing and then she's like uh even gronk knows it's not real money it was like mm -hmm. oh do we oh just start dying laughing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I lost it. I lost it. Yeah. Really and then, I think and I'm then gonna you watch that. Cameos. Uh huh. What were you guys' thoughts on the cameos that showed up? Oh, it was all kinds of shit, man. It was crazy. It was kind of like first I was like three hours, you know, and then when I saw it all come together, I was like. Hell yeah, all right, three hours, you know, it made sense, you know? Yeah, I Will haven't Ferrell seen the whole thing. As... Oh, did you see uh, Will Ferrell coming out as Ron Burgundy? See, that was good. Uh, but then you got towards the end where you had, like, um... <laughs> what did you do, Roger Park? Out here, but then he wants to die. <laughs> you good? All right. Uh, <laughs> but then you had, like, Ben Affleck. And, yeah, uh, did you see his speech thing he did? Huh? Yeah. Fucking just everyone looking all fucking like, oh my god, you guys make my jaw hurt. Like everyone. <laughs> Gronk, I mean Gronk was good, don't get me wrong, but like I mean certain events you still gotta be drug tested, still go out there <laughs> oh, to be able to perform, you know what I'm saying? Like not at the ropes ones, though, man. Uh, but they they were all good funny jokes, like props to them. I mean, it was a party. Enjoy yourselves. Just don't get busted. Don't hurt anyone. Fuck. Be safe, yeah, but you know? Ben Affleck kind of came out all, like, been out of shape, you know? He was like, yeah, well, they're going to talk shit about you, and rah, rah, rah. And it was like, you know, all right. Well, Ben's here, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. <laughs> Go get, well, let's got, get ben, but, a, ben a drink. Let's get Ben a drink over here. Let's see, that was a bold move, because didn't they get popped together? Uh, <laughs> I thought yeah, they maybe. Got and then for having the same housekeeper situation, just no, you guys, you guys need to separate. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, it just I thought that was like, whoa, okay. Like I know they did the commercial and everything this last year for Super Bowl for Dunkin' Donuts, but you just like guys, you guys need to stop hanging out because you guys are a bad influence on each other. 
hits on each other. Uh, well, what's I mean, his name? Uh, uh, Bert. Uh, what's Bert his name? Tom Segura. Yeah, so they came out and did that, and I saw a thing with uh, TikTok he made this morning where Bert was like, yeah, I was sitting there the whole time reading the jokes before they read them the whole fucking time like I'm a fucking idiot, you know? It was pretty funny. He was like, he was razzing himself because he's like, the whole night I sat there and read the jokes on the prompter, you know? He was like... just listening to them. Yeah, yeah. He already knew the joke, you know, because he was reading it, you know? It was like, he's, I'm a fucking idiot. Why the fuck would I do that? It's funny. <laughs> Why would I ruin it? But he's yeah. done been laughing, too, like some shit that they said. I couldn't imagine not, like, not having it happen in the moment with, especially the way, like, uh, some of them came across, like, their attitude towards it. I couldn't yeah. imagine. Go- it's like, bro, you really, you, I think you kind of killed it for yourself, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I think it's two different fields that you, where you have like the athletes, they never really mingled much with the comic uh, relief people in high school. You know what I'm saying? Like the, yeah. the donors or the, the class clowns, like the jocks never really tolerated that shit. So I think it's a little weird to start roasting people that really can't take jokes you know yeah i get what you're saying uh i for me like i i really stopped watching the roast when they started feeling forced um like when donald trump had his you're just like he bought this one you could clearly tell he was disappointed that he didn't get a roast so he paid for the whole thing to get put together and then you're just like this is fucking awkward as fuck you know yeah, uh, but that that's kind of like been one of my last experiences with the roast, and uh, I don't know. I thought they did a good job pulling that one together last night for him. Yeah, Tom, it was good. It was funny. I laughed my ass off, so that's good. All right. Well, uh, be sure to check out our uh, links. Uh, like, subscribe, follow. If you like what we're doing here, uh, you're gonna love even more what we do with our music. Uh, but you should listen to that on Spotify, iTunes. You can listen to that on iTunes now. Please listen. Give one or two songs to listen on iTunes. Get those numbers up as well. And uh, YouTube. we got a good YouTube channel where you can see uh, these shows and uh, the stuff we do with our music on there too as well. We are the last days of war. Gentlemen, anything else you want to add? Uh, thank you to everybody for helping us cross 10,000 so far with final do it myself. See, I yeah. told you that shit was going to happen by the time that episode dropped. It was just no. like, oh, well, we're good. We're right. close. No, we no you were absolutely right. right. You were right. You called it. So thank you again, guys. Keep listening. See you next week, guys. Peace.